Hey everyone and welcome to The Year Was, the podcast all about today that gives you just enough information to effectively be that guy at the party, causing all your friends to question, hey, who invited you? Like, seriously, why are you here? I'm your host Michael Montalvo, for the next few minutes we will swim through the river of time to find out what makes it a truly unique. On this episode we examine the events that occurred... November 4th. As is often the case, I went and prepared a whole episode finding a great topic to discuss and sat down ready to record. Then I looked at the date and realizing I was a day off, I decided to scrap my episodic plans and instead began to scramble to find a new topic and now here I am once again sitting before you, voice traveling through the airwaves writing my episode for November 4th. This has become my comfort zone as of late, but enough about me. Instead, let me ask you this. When was the last time we were all really obsessed with something? I mean, besides the Kardashians, Tiger King, or 2020. Do you remember when the Tiger King was all we could talk about? Those were the days. To start this episode, let's talk about the man Howard Carter. Carter was born in Kensington, May 9th, 1874, to parents Samuel and Martha. Why did you say that name? His father was an artist, and that interest transferred itself to Carter up until he met the Amherst family, who lived down the street. Lord Amherst was a client of Carter's father, but more important to the story, he allowed the younger Carter to frequent his home and look upon his collection of Egyptian artifacts. And soon, his interest in Egypt was noted by his new friends. He would eventually visit Egypt with an Amherst family friend and impress excavation teams with his attention to detail, so much so that influential scholars would invite him to sites to work as an artist. And while that's impressive in and of itself, what's more astonishing is that he did all of this work with no stencils, graphs, or tools. It was all freehand. He then began work with many respected archaeologists, taking pictures and making sketches while contributing to the world of archaeology as a whole. He discovered many already robbed tombs, or rediscovered as the case may be, and developed a system that is still used today to map out the lands of undiscovered tombs. Things were going incredibly well for him until a violent incident, I couldn't find out exactly what, forced his resignation. Then, in 1907, Howard Carter received an invitation from George Herbert, a.k.a. Lord Carnarvon, concerning excavations of noble tombs. Permission would not be granted to Carnarvon until 1914, but it would not be until 1917 that they would begin digging in the Valley of the Kings. And while they were there, things didn't go exactly as planned. In 1922, Lord Carnarvon presented Carter with the ultimatum to find me something or pack up and go home. Carnarvon, it seemed, had had enough of the desert and gave Carter only a few months more to yield results. Determined, Carter decided to retrace their steps and return to areas already searched in hopes of finding something that they may have missed, and that's when luck struck. Months before, a patch of dirt had given no results, and a line of huts had been risen on the site, but that's where Carter wanted to look, so the huts were dismantled and the bedrock cleared. The year was 1922, and on this day, November 4th, Howard Carter and a team of excavators discovered what would be the top step of a flight of stairs that would lead to a previously forgotten tomb. But whose tomb was it? Carter would later write, The design was certainly of the 18th dynasty. Could it be a tomb of a noble buried here by royal consent? Was it a royal cache, a hiding place to which a mummy and its equipment had been removed for safety? Or was it actually the tomb of the king for whom I had spent so many years in search? On November 6th, two days after finding the step, Carter wrote to Carnarvon, at last have made a wonderful discovery in the valley, a magnificent tomb with seals intact, recovered, same for your arrival. Congratulations. It would take many days of digging 
by November 23rd, a sealed door had been uncovered, and on the bottom of the door, seals intact, was the name of the tomb's owner, Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun, or King Tut, was king of ancient Egypt from 1333 to 1323 BCE. It's kind of fitting that Carter would find the tomb of King Tut because during his reign, traditional religion and art was restored. Not a lot is known about King Tutankhamun, but what we do know is that he suffered from severe disorders due to inbreeding. This included a club foot that would have prevented him from walking unaided or even from riding in a chariot. Tutankhamun was the youngest pharaoh of Egypt taking the role at age 9 until his death at 19 from what we now believe was a result of malaria and a bad fall which led to an infection in his leg that became gangrene. They found the tomb and while it was sealed, the tomb was not intact. In the upper left corner of the doorway, they saw it had been broken and resealed. This was actually a good thing though, as a resealed tomb was more likely to hold treasure. Following Tutankhamun's death throughout the many, many years, tomb robbers became a thing, but measures were taken in order to prevent robbers from reaching the inner tomb, such as booby traps. There were cases of robbers robbing before the tomb was even sealed, but here's the thing. Once a grave robber had taken everything of value, there was no reason for them to reseal the tomb. By this point, it had been estimated that King Tut's tomb had already been raided two times, so for it to be sealed led Carter and his team to wonder just what was in store for them to find. With this in mind, the seals and the door were photographed, and then they went in. They first entered the antechamber where two statues of the king stood facing each other. There, they discovered artifacts along with a second sealed door. These artifacts would have to be moved before the second door could be opened, but once opened, inside, they would find the sarcophagus of the king, the most intact to date. It was the find of a lifetime. Over the next decade, Carter would bring items found in the tomb to the public's eye, and the world would become obsessed. But what about the Pharaoh's curse? Most people agree that there isn't one. Lord Carnarvon died in 1923 after a mosquito bite became infected by a razor cut, so people began to claim a curse was the culprit. Carter himself would spend his later years after excavating the tomb, traveling the U.S., giving lectures about Egypt and King Tut, and reinvigorating America's interest in ancient Egypt. He would die in London, March 2nd, 1939 of lymphoma. As for King Tut, he was once an obscure and forgotten pharaoh, but because of this discovery, he has really become the face of ancient Egypt. The artifacts from his tomb have traveled the world and were once housed in London, but have since returned to Egypt to be put on display. And that's going to do it for us today. If you like this podcast and want to hear more, give us a rate and a review. That helps me out and helps steer this in a direction that is hopefully good for all. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the Year Was audio version on your podcast app of choice. You can find me on social media and at YouTube at the Apple Cider Club. And as always, I want to thank the Tim Kreitz Band for our musical theme. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.